Once dead. Get to go. Uh. Divers, divers, this is the top side. This is top side. Do you copy? Yeah, reading you loud and clear. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Loud and clear. Over. Enjoy your dive and let's go find some sharks. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Finding the sharks isn't a problem. Okay, here they are. Wow, plenty of sharks. They're gathered in the main channel, hanging in the tidal current. But working against such a strong current is tough going for divers. To film the sharks hunting at night, the crew need powerful underwater lights. They mounted them onto a scooter to help with the current. A submerged uh, underwater scooter, DPV, diver propulsion vehicle, right here on the lights. They are attached to the front. On the side back here you have the propeller. It's like a torpedo with lights. The rig is designed to light a large enough area of reef to capture the full scale of the spectacle. Kind of spooky. I see shark eyes reflecting. The lights are working well, so the crew descend towards the channel. Unconcerned by the lights, the sharks begin to hunt. Wow, they're all here, right? The divers approach cautiously, keeping their distance from the sharks. Plenty of sharks, and this is a definite mood to daytime. Do you know what? These guys are switched on. They're active. Be careful in there. Just as the action hots up, the lighting rig fails. Back to the boat. There are a few species more elusive than the Siberian tiger, and the Our Planet team has come up with a remarkable plan to film them. We're going to go into the hides with the prospect of doing approximately 800 hours in a small wooden box by the end of the shoot. To have any chance of filming a tiger, they'll have to live inside the heart of tiger territory themselves. They're using specially built hides just big enough for one person to live in. So it's a bit like uh, caravanning, um, but sort of bizarre winter caravanning uh, where you're looking for a place with good, uh, good views of tigers. The hides had to be placed precisely to afford the best view. But perhaps some are just a little too precise. <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of like you just moved into a new house and you don't know where anything is. <laughs> but the trouble is this house is very, very small. And you've got a lot of stuff here. The camera team will live inside these hides over the next two winters. All right, cheers, see you later. Okay, bye. Good bye. Luck, Paul. bye. For six days at a time, they will never even open the door. No, I'm not staying in there. <laughs> Siberian tigers have the largest territories of any cat, and they are notoriously shy. So by living in these hides, they hope to stand a chance of being there at the right moment without disturbing the tiger. While the others sit patiently in their box, Kieran is using the knowledge of local scientists to build a network of camera traps across the tiger landscape. The least comfortable thing I've ever done. <laughs> the slightest movement will trigger these cameras, so he must return regularly to check his catch. Initial signs are not very promising. 
I think it looks like more of nothing. Damn. And our planet team are in the Canadian Arctic. They've heard reports that at a few spots along the coast, and for just a couple of weeks a year, polar bears have learned to do something extraordinary. At their base camp on the Barnouin River in Quebec, bear guide Alain shows them some tantalizing footage from the previous year. Forced ashore by the summer ice melt, the bears here have learned to catch fish from the rivers. This brief feast provides them with valuable energy in the increasingly long ice-free season. There's lots of fish over there, and sometimes we haven't seen a wolf fishing with them. Yeah. Good expectations pretty low, actually. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, exactly, yeah. But there are only a few rivers shallow enough for the bears to catch migrating fish. These are over 100 kilometers further north, and for the crew, only accessible by small float plane. You tell, if you tell me we're going to have good water, your chance of seeing polar bear catching char in the next two weeks are just uh, 90, oh, yes, 95. Yes. Perfect. No big deal. Not phased by a little drizzle, the team test their kit. They're hoping to capture the first ever underwater footage of polar bears fishing and have built a special camera trap for the job. Yeah. Horizon good? Um, uh, no, actually, that's slightly off, I think. Once it's working, they get the rest of their cameras ready. All they need to do now is to get them in front of a polar bear. Extensively quarter mile to two mile fog drizzle, so non-fit weather for flying. I mean, you're gonna fly maybe one mile and you run into a, a far bank and uh, you got no visibility, you're stuck. Another day in camp. Yeah. We, could, we were thinking weighing ourselves with all our kit. We started yesterday. 32 pounds. The drone weighed. Done. 327, I was 206. Here. This is not good. <laughs> I'm overweight capacity, and we're maxing out this bush plane. And it looks like, since I am the fattest, I'm getting left behind, and I'm not happy about it. Okay, let's have a look at this. What are we at? <laughs> we're at 226. What? I know. Too many pancakes and bacon. <laughs> My slight concern is we've got another week. Absolutely. Water dictates every, everything that we do every day. In French Polynesia, good news. The lighting rig is back in action. To capture the ultimate sequence, the crew need to get right in amongst the sharks. And for that, they need extra protection. Bite-proof chain mail suits. If you don't use it, you have a big chance, I think, to be bitten. Everything is right here from a safety point of view. So it's no fear, it's just intensity, excitement, acceleration. Tonight, the sharks are gathering in even greater numbers. Oh, that is a lot of sharks. Using all his experience, Doug carefully judges the moment to move closer. They look all right tonight. I'm going to get in there. By remaining calm and moving slowly, the cameramen get right in the middle of the hunting sharks. That's a lot of sharks. And manage to film hundreds of top predators in a feeding frenzy, without becoming part of it. <laughs> really great action. Get 
Yep. Wonderful. You're really in the middle of a predation scene, and you feel very small at the end. Today, such incredible scenes only occur in places like French Polynesia, where sharks are protected. <laughs> 